Hello and welcome back everyone to La Milana Randomizer Part 17 and in this episode we'll be continuing on through the Dimensional Corridor after successfully killing the uh, Swarm of Dragons and the Soundwave Dog we have successfully obtained an Ankh Jewel which will be important later because uh, yeah there, there, there's, a, there's a true guardian in this area. I don't know if you've uh, caught on to this pattern yet Mr. Cloud but there's a true guardian in each pairing of areas. Also each area is, uh, is paired up with another. But first we must fight the Whirlwind Wyvern. I hate this boss. Chakra. This particular sub boss, if you notice, is actually protected by a not by a swirling energy vortex around him at all times, unless he's attempting to joust at you. And so we jousted him back with the combination of ring and chakram, which do as much damage as normal bullets at, uh, uh, because of the combination of ring and chakram. Just remember to stand perfectly still, and even the tornado will let you pass. No, you have to actually attack this tornado in order for that to work. Remember to bring your anti-tornado hammer. It's actually a chakram, but it's a it's a good point to have. I'm not entirely sure how much health the tornado the uh, tornado segments actually have, but they are segments. Uh, uh, you can and uh, you can break uh, and any number of them, assuming that you're in the right position to do so. But you do not want to get into melee range because that tornado hurts. All right. So by completing the first sphere, which which is a term that uh, randomizers um, use in order to define uh, uh, the uh, the general path that people are supposed to take of dimensional corridor, we have successfully gained the ability to the gain the ability to walk out. This is very important because uh, as long as we're inside the dimensional corridor until we take down the true guardian, we cannot warp out of the dimensional corridor with the holy grail. We have to actually walk out each time. Time. Yes, time is saved. Pathways will save you time. You must unlock these pathways by being awesome first. Or you could be slow. Like a rookie. Mm, healing spring. But yeah, the rest of this part will mostly be us going back, uh, going in and out of Dimensional Corridor, uh, slowly completing each of the mini-boss gauntlets. Save because, game. yeah. There are, depending on how many trips you decide to do, there are up to three gaunt, uh, three gauntlets that you have to take down. We've already done the first one, which is uh, Gear to uh, Bulu, um, the, the Swarm of Dragons, the Soundwave Dog, and the Whirlwind Wyvern. And the next, uh, the next uh, one that we're supposed to do is actually the Holy, uh, the Holy Ox uh, and the Merman. But instead, we're going to go and do and we're going to go and do what is instead the hardest of the mini bosses in this area. Take him out. Behold the water dragon. Now I know it doesn't look like a water dragon at the moment, but there's a reason why this guy I I called the water dragon. All of these game, all of these um, uh, all of these mini bosses actually have their own name, and they're all based on the specific myth uh, revolving around the. Uh, a Assyrian creation, uh, a Assyrian creation slash destruction deity. I don't want to. I don't want to actually name her at the moment because it's kind of a spoiler. But yeah, they're all they're all specifically her kids. That was a. But that is why. Water. But that is why I call this uh, this one the water dragon because um he spews the uh, waterfall that is uh, that is the original way to uh to solve this uh, puzzle. You'll notice that there's a ladder in the top right portion of the screen. Um, what, uh, how, how you're supposed to get to the room above us is you're supposed to wait for him to do the water, the the uh, the uh, water geyser attack, and then when it's when it's on screen, use the lamp of time to freeze the the water geyser in place. Then climb up the waterfall and then and then go up the ladder. The reason why you have to do it that way is because originally this ladder does not spawn in. Um, in the original Lama Lana remake, this ladder right here does not spawn in. This is a change that the rando makes so that you do not have to have Lamp of Time for this particular uh, puzzle. Well, thank goodness that we have randomizer creators who think of these things, assuming that according to the rules of the game they create, that they are actually making the, day, the game all practically impossible at times. Um... I wouldn't say impossible, I would say super motherfucking frustrating. Because if you screw up the Lamp of Time puzzle, you effectively have to do a soft reset until, uh, until you get it correctly. You only get the one shot at that puzzle. Um, because 
if you kill if you kill water dragon before you before you get up into that room you cannot otherwise get up into that room but does the water dragon respawn no it's a mini boss oh. yeah. unfortunately this time all that was up there all that was up there was actually coins but you know having more money is always a good thing There's, there's definitely a game where I played that you have to do something similar because the boss, like, opens the pathway for you. Um, now, Dark Souls does it a little bit. It, it does. It does. There's, there's, like, a gate that's... And then you have to get the boar to attack it or something. And it's the only way to get it open is to get the, is to get the enemy to break it open for you. Yeah. Also, there's the uh, there's the uh, dragon bridge that you know is covered with enemy that is covered with uh, enemies and uh, uh, continuously as long as the dragon is still alive. And y I don't think you ever killed that dragon, did you? Well, the Hydra? No, not the Hydra. The dragon. There, there's a dra there's a uh, dragon on the bridge in the undead burg or uh, or or around that area, and. Um, I don't think you, during our playthrough, actually ever fought that damn dragon. Yeah, but you don't have to kill the White Serpent and Sekiro either, but the game forgives you for that. It just gives you an achievement if you figure out how to do it. Alright. This enemy I always call the Nemean Lion, because uh, in the next game it actually is the Nemean Lion. It's the exact same goddamn attack pattern, even. It's, e it's even in a similar room. No. And so by slaying the Nemean Lion, we have the ability to progress into... Now, this is actually the, the third of the uh, boss gauntlets that we're doing. because I refer to it as, a, as the third because it has three bosses that we're doing. We're doing Nemean Lion, uh, the, uh, the Armored Shark, and, uh, and the World Eater Worm. So the game Can I you was... guess what mini boss is next? Um, oh, shit. Smart. It is the Armored Shark. The reason why this particular enemy I, re I refer to as the Armored Shark is because if you go down into the water there, he turns into a shark and starts torpedoing at you. And um, you don't want to do that because he's invincible while, while, uh, while he's down there. So you must challenge him in what is only an acquired skill, which is walking on land with his stupid nut made for walking on land legs. All right. And here is the World Devouring Worm. Again, all these creatures actually do have names, and you can even figure out what their names are if you bother to uh, look at the map names, because the, uh, their their names are actually uh, labeled uh, 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 labeled on their rooms. This is actually the that that is actually the easiest time I have ever had with the uh, the, the World Devouring Worm. Usually, he ends up uh, going off screen more often than that. Yeah, enemies that all you have to do is avoid them, uh, they deal a lot of touch damage. Yes. Alright, so since we're at full health and we just did a quick save, let's go do uh, boss, uh, the gauntlet number two after wow. we fall into some spikes. Mm. Up the ladder again. It is moments like these where I really wish that we could actually use the Holy Grail inside the Dimensional Corridor because I wouldn't have that one. I wouldn't have actually fallen into those spikes then, and two, it would be just slightly faster to go up to uh, that room. Here is the Holy Cow. Holy Cow! <laughs> Behold the power of Apollo. He flies. He flies, and that and that uh, aura does a shit ton of touch damage. But because uh, be, but because we have the flail whip, we have the ability to uh, cheese. Uh, we have the ability to cheese out this boss uh, simply by uh, staying underneath him. There we go. Yeah, <laughs> he made a moose sound. Yep. That was a that was a nice touch, and it made me laugh. All right. But what is this? Are we actually going to go talk to him? It, uh, no, we are not. Okay. I, I think we're actually missing the philosopher's ocarina to go to go talk to him at the moment. But that is where Phobos, the, the last of the four philosophers, is. Nope. More monies. So as we've been and here we have the Merman. Come on. There. Merman. Merman. 
The merman is honestly is honestly like the second easiest of, uh, of all the boss uh, of all the bosses. The only the only one that's honestly easier is uh, Jared Tabulu, but it, it you are but th that is completely dependent on you having either the scale sphere or the helmet, specifically the helmet. If you have the helmet, this fight is actually is actually very easy, and you're not really allowed to get to this point without having the helmet, at least normally. So that is an upside down key symbol. The keyhole symbol, to be spe more specific, that reminds me of how my front door lock was upside down for like three years. Mm, did it? Was it actually a negative experience for you to have an upside down door lock? Kind of, because because it is it, you know, because every other door lock that you run into typically it's it's right side up, but because it's upside down, you have to remember the nuance of this one door lock in order to actually open the door. Yes, Pascarette is specifically scared of the dimensional corridor. Well, we've done all three. Well, we've done all three of the boss gauntlets. So let's go take down the uh, final mini boss. There are, uh, is it twelve? No, it's eleven. There are there are a total of uh, of eleven children in the dimensional corridor. And as Pascarette spoiled, yes, they are Tiamat's uh, children. To unlock the final, to unlock the final child, child number eleven, you have to solve a very, very cryptic puzzle. A very, very cryptic puzzle, and that puzzle involves um, summoning spirits. Unfortunately, this is not the room that we start this puzzle. We have to go to a different room. Yep, almost all the lights are up except for one. And you have, to, and you have to take down all eleven children before you can fight Tiamat. Because then the parent gets angry, saying, "You killed my children." Honestly, I'm not entirely sure if Tiamat cares uh, at all about her children. But yes, uh, uh, the solution to this puzzle is actually relatively well documented throughout the ruins, but it's hidden behind a couple a uh, couple of software pieces. This is not the right way, Pascardet. No, that's not the room. Actually, no, that is the room that we're supposed to be in now, right? And then go up here, get to the clay doll up here. You want to whip right and, uh, sorry, left, then right in each of these four rooms uh, at these specific points. Okay. They're effectively just in the dead center of the room, so it's so it's not all that hard to get to these points. But there we are. <laughs> Behold, Masushu, the giant griffin, or giant chimera, if you will. No, it's not a chimera. Are you sure? Because it's got uh, it's got uh, eagle legs, it's got lion legs, it's got eagle wings, it's got a goat and a goat sledge demon head. Uh, that, that looks like a dragon head. Okay, dragon head. The mobile Super X2. Now we have twice as much memory space for our ROMs, yeah. which means that we can actually set up our our uh, final um, setup for uh, for both combat and exploration. Behold, now we have the ability to go fight Tiamat. Yeah. I'm not entirely sure when we're going to go fight Tiamat. It probably won't be this session, honestly. Tiamat is always the boss that I do, is always the uh, major guardian that I do last. Simply because Tiamat's got one specific attack during phase three that I have problems avoiding. And um, I'll usually I end up just damage racing her in order, in order to beat her from that form. All right, so now the Dimensional Corridor is effectively done, what else do we need to do? Well, we got the Mobile Super X and we got another Ankh Jewel, so... More than likely... We've already... No, we've already done Palenque, we've done V... Did we do Baphomet already, Mr. Cloud? Yeah, I remember. <laughs> oh. Well, we have the we have the Life Seal, so let's at least open up this. Normally, this is just a Coins Chest, but here... It is the Philosopher's Ocarina! Woohoo! Alright, so in the next part, we'll probably go start talking to philosophers. <laughs>